Hello everyone and welcome. We are inside of the 2018 Volkswagen Tiguan. This is Volkswagen's first model which is running their new EA888 engine running the new Budak cycle. This new engine cycle which Volkswagen has developed. It was named uh, Budak cycle by Volkswagen after their powertrain engineer who developed it. Now this cycle is basically a variation of the modern Atkinson cycle which is a variation of the Miller cycle without a supercharger. So what does all this mean? Well that's what we're going to get into in this video. How does this engine work? Why is it more efficient? Uh, that kind of thing. So in order to understand that, we need to understand the Atkinson cycle. And the modern Atkinson cycle, what it is, is during your intake stroke, everything happens as normal. Your intake valve opens, your piston moves down, it pulls in that air-fuel mixture. Now during the compression stroke, you leave that intake valve open for a short duration, so you're pushing out some of that air, some of that intake charge. And what this does is it lowers your effective compression ratio. So now your compression ratio is smaller than your expansion ratio because your expansion ratio has remained the same. That never changes. Now by having a lower compression ratio than your expansion ratio, you're able to extract more useful work out of it. So the whole idea is the piston has a longer distance to travel down and expand outward than it is compressing that gas. So more of the energy from combustion is turned into useful work. The ultimate goal is that the, at the bottom dead center of the Atkinson cycle, what happens is uh, you're at atmospheric pressure. That's the ultimate goal. So that means you've turned all the available heat and pressure from combustion into useful work. The Budak cycle, the cycle which Volkswagen has developed, is basically the same thing except instead of opening the intake valve for a longer duration, you're closing that intake valve sooner. So during the intake stroke, you're going to close that intake valve before that piston reaches bottom dead center. Now this is effectively doing the same thing. You're reducing the amount of air that you pull in, and as a result, your compression ratio is less than your expansion ratio. And because of this, of course, you're going to have greater efficiency. So the specific output of the engine goes down when you're running this mode, uh, but the efficiency goes up. So it's great, you know, when you're cruising on the highway, when you're at low loads, and Volkswagen has a solution for when you want power. So when you do want power, there's a cam lobe switch. So there's this little pin that forces the cam to a longer duration profile and actually a higher profile. So you open the intake valve more and you open it for a longer duration and so that's for this power cycle when you you know you put your foot down you want full power from the engine it gives it to you uh, and it switches over to you know the normal auto cycle that most engines out there are running so they do have you know a pretty cool visualization of this this 3d model and so I'll try to put these two intake strokes side by side and hopefully you can see the difference you know the intake valve running the Budak cycle closing sooner than you know when you're just running the traditional auto cycle and you know you want to make more power for that version so pretty cool that you know it's able to switch between these two different modes it's not you know the most groundbreaking thing ever they're just you know it's a it's a different take on the Atkinson cycle which is a way of increasing fuel economy uh, so cool that they've taken another approach to it and you know come up with this clever solution to differ the expansion ratio from the compression ratio so has this engine cycle change been an effective means of increasing fuel economy? Well, it certainly has improved from the previous generation Tiguan, uh, but you're still only getting 27 miles per gallon on the highway, even if you get the all-wheel drive version or the front-wheel drive version, both of them getting 27 miles per gallon on the highway, which for this segment, you know, certainly isn't class leading. The Honda CRV, the Mazda CX-5, the Subaru Forester, all of those, you know, able to achieve the low 30 mile per gallon range on the highway um, so they are able to do better than you know this engine cycle this is a fairly heavy vehicle so that probably plays a big role uh, in its fuel economy rating it is cool that they have improved it although you know compared to the competition they're not exactly at the top if you guys have any questions or comments feel free to leave those below thanks for watching